Hi, my name is Tina, and welcome to Knitting Blooms, episode 17. Today is August 20th. It's Saturday, and I think I'm liking recording on Saturday. I, last week I recorded on Saturday, and what it did for me was it gave me time to get the episode loaded on my computer, and I think last week I did get it loaded um, up onto Blip before Sunday morning, but this way I can get it get it loaded up early and then I have Sunday to do other things around the house. So welcome to the show. It's Saturday. I am happy to be sitting here with you because I've been busy busy beaver around the house today um, just doing things that need to get done and I'm just now sitting down. It's about about four o'clock, I think. That's what time I wanted to start recording. I don't think it's, uh, yeah, actually, it's exactly four o'clock. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've been just just busy around the house today. Haven't done a lot of knitting. I did sit down this morning and had my coffee. Haven't even had a chance to watch podcast today yet. So after I finish recording, while I am downloading the file to the computer, I'll watch some podcasts and then a little later I'm going to be doing a virtual knit night but you won't know about that until after the virtual knit night but anyway I am glad to be sitting down because I've been busy all morning so um, I'm going to jump right in to my finished object well I'm calling it a finished object because it is almost done it'll be done it's just has has some minor things or the just the seams to seam up and you don't know anything about this project because I just started it on Friday actually Thursday Thursday night and it is a pair of slippers I have been wanting to do another pair of slippers for a little while now um, I just I just did one not too long ago for my husband um, but I've been wanting to do another pair for myself and I had some leftover of this wool this is the wool from my um, my wicked sweater that I finished like the week after or the week before or something I think it I I had I think it was the second episode um, when I started the podcast and I had some leftover wool and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But then I had this big idea that I was going to make slippers out of it because it is so soft. And I don't know how it's going to felt up, but it's an experiment. It was leftover. It wasn't like I was buying extra for it or not, you know, just to try it. So it feels really nice. So I'm hoping that when it if it felt how it felt it's gonna felt just as nice now I did this was a DK weight it's the city tweed uh, nit pick city tweed and this is DK weight and I did this I did the slipper first um, I knit it and I only used two strands and I should have known better uh, because I knew it was a, a DK weight but I thought well let's see how how it looks well I knit the whole top part of the slipper and it really was a little bit light so I ripped it out actually I knit the second slipper just to see if I liked it better with the three because I, I then I um, did three strands instead of two with this weight yarn and it worked out great and then so then I ripped out the first one and I redid it with three strands and it turned out really nice. I, again, I don't know how it's going to felt up, but I think it'll I think it'll be okay. Um, this this is it's a uh, the co the content is merino wool, super fine alpaca, and dongle tweed. So I believe it's feltable. I'm you know if it's not, it was it was an experiment. This tan color that I use for the bottom is just wool of the Andes. Now most of the slippers that I have done have been made with wool of the Andes. I have done a few pairs 
with something other than Wool of the Andes, like I've used Peyton's Wool, um, I have used Cascade for the base of another pair with, I think it's an Encore Wool for the top, and I really like that. So far, I haven't really found, I think uh, the combination between the Encore Wool and the Cascade have been my, my favorite. I'm not, I don't really like the Wool of the Andes as much as some of, of the other ones that I've done. But it's, it's a cheap thing, so if, if I'm mass producing slippers, which I did a few years ago, I think I knit like 13 pairs in one, for Christmas one year. So I think total, I think I've done close to 20, if not more than 20 pairs of these slippers. So I'm still trying to find my ultimate and if this city tweed felt up nice, this might be my ultimate because it is it is soft. And if it felt up and it's this soft when it's felted, I wouldn't mind spending, you know, I think it's I want to say it's like 350 450 a skein. And I would think that I would need 6 skeins if I used the same color for the top and the bottom. If I used a different color, I think I could still get by with six skeins, three of each. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I could. Because it is, the, the balls are 130, I think 123, um, they're 123 yards. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, let's see how much the, oops, that's the same thing. The Wool of the Andes is, I think, 100, 110. And I usually have, I want to say, no, I probably would need four. But although Wool of the Andes, I never use the whole thing. So I usually get two of one color for the tops and then four of the other color for the bottoms and I have quite a bit I just barely broke into the the second balls of this color I haven't weighed them I'll weigh them and find out exactly how much I have left and that'll help me determine but I'm glad that I made them. So all I really have to do on these is sew up the bottoms, which I'll do a little later, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, and then I'll be able to felt them up. One thing I did want to mention, which I usually do with my slippers, you know, as many slippers as I've made, I've kind of come up with a, a process for myself that works for me. What I do when I'm knitting my base when I'm knitting my the, the sole. When I cast on, I leave a lot of extra. I make sure that I, that I measure out, you know, about, I don't know, cl probably close to two feet, maybe even more. Um, and then I pull out what I need for my long tail cast on. And the reason I do this is because then I have this long piece that I can see right up the center here um, when I'm done. And I didn't do that on my first couple because I didn't know. But then after I did, you know, six pairs, you know, I found that it really did work better for me. So that's what I do. I leave a really long um, tail when I'm doing my long tail cast on so that I have that, that long piece to seam up the center. So... These are almost done. Hopefully by next week I will be able to give you some feedback on how this city tweet felt up. Um, I will be at Stitches Midwest next week when I record, so I probably won't have them with me, but I will try and take a picture and then I'll be able to still give you an update on how, how I liked it. But there's two slippers done. It took me, I cast on the one Thursday night and I got two bot two soles done because I always do my soles. I do one sole and then I do the other sole and then I start the top just so that I can when I'm done with the top I can immediately put that sole on the bottom. Cast it on Thursday night 
I knit the whole top part with the two strands Thursday night. <clears throat> and then on Friday, I decided that I was going to try the other one the other with the three strands. And so Friday night, I didn't knit much at work on Friday. Um, in fact, I didn't knit at all on Friday. Um, so Friday night, I did the other one. And I liked it much better, so then I ripped it back, and then I finished the second slipper. I finished the first slipper last night, and I got the second slipper started. I had, I only had one of the soles done on the second slipper, and then I started the top part, and then I put it down, and I finished that up this morning. So it, for me, these these are pretty quick. I knit the smallest size this time. Typically, I knit the medium size for me. Um, I think it's the medium. It's the second to smallest size. There might be two sizes up. Um, so I usually knit the uh, the size the next size up. But I always seem to. I like my slippers tight on my feet, so it just seems like I have to felt them an awful lot in order to get them to fit my feet. And then even still. They're not tight enough. So this time I thought I would try the smallest size to see if I like that size better. So we'll see how that goes. So, and I still, and I had four balls of the City Tweed, and I still have quite a bit left over. There's another little small ball in here. So I still have quite a bit left over. My guess is I could probably, I probably have enough to do a pair of fingerless mitts. I'm almost sure that I have enough to do fingerless mitts with this. So that's what this might be. But one project done. It's a quick project for me. I did time myself one time. Um, I can knit the small size or the next size up. Usually if I'm pushing through and really focused on my knitting and not changing the channels or getting up to get something to eat or whatever it takes me about six and a half hours to knit a pair of slippers so that's a quick project almost done slippers the next project is the Bacardi and I did work on the Bacardi a little bit this week I did finish up that knitting for hire uh, that I was working on last week and Gave that to the designer. But this week after I finished that, it was really liberating to not have to knit. I mean, I like to knit and I don't mind doing the whole knitting for hire and everything. But sometimes deadlines are stressful. So this week without having a deadline or having a specific goal that I had to try and meet this week it was nice to just knit whenever I felt like knitting and if I didn't feel like knitting I didn't have to knit which was nice too because I did play sims quite a bit this week <laughs> and I enjoyed it <laughs> so I did about I would say about two inches on this this week I believe I was somewhere right around here last week and so I did quite a bit I did about two inches which really for how quick it takes me to do that is not a lot but again I didn't I didn't really knit a whole lot I mostly at work I mostly didn't knit at all this week I think I did pull out my knitting a little bit but usually when I had some free time at work I was playing sims and I did most of my knitting after work at home after I finished my workout for the day so really I probably knit maybe two hours every night if that but this is coming right along it is so pretty I love it I I really do I am very excited about this and I do wanna like hurry up and finish it but I don't want it to feel like I'm rushing to get it done. I want to be able to enjoy it as I knit it. But I love the colors and they're really coming together nice. So that is Bacardi a little bit further along than last week.
and I am still cutting my threads or my yarn if the color has to travel up more than four rows. I'm not in any worried state that I'm going to run out of yarn because I have a whole nother skein of all these colors. Well, not the not the dark green. I only have one skein of the dark green, but everything else I have multiple colors. Mul or two, another ball. So that's Bacardi. On point. Got a little bit of love this week. I think I probably did. Well, this goes really quick. I probably did two two inches or so. Um, I'm pretty sure I was somewhere down in here. I I really should put a little, like the little stitch marker like this. Um, what are these? Coilless pins on my work so that I can say, okay, here's where I was last week and then I can show you where I am this week. Not that you really have to see exactly how much work I got done, but it's fun to see that I like sometimes I like to do that sometimes when I'm working on socks I will put a stitch marker in there because socks it feels like oh my gosh it takes forever because those rows are so tiny I'll put one of those little stitch markers in there and be able to see how much I knit that day or the previous day or whatever but this isn't so exciting it's coming along there's no specific deadline on this, so I can kind of knit this at my leisure, and um, I don't have to hurry up and get it done or anything like that. So that's that's one nice thing about working for this particular person is that usually she doesn't have specific deadlines, and if she does, it's usually a few months out, so there's no stress with knitting this. So not, not much progress on this, and it's not too exciting to look at because it's all it is is stockinette. So, and a solid color. So that's that. The next thing is Modified Lady Eleanor. And as much as I thought about pulling this out this week, I didn't. I think... I did. I thought about pulling this out a few times this week, and I just, I just didn't. I do have, in addition to this skein, which is really barely even used, I do have two more skeins that I want to do. And I think in the coming weeks, I will determine... A goal and maybe I want to say I'm gonna finish this by the end of the year or something I'm gonna determine I'm gonna set a goal for myself for this project because this project's been on the needles for quite a while and I do need to get it done plus if I say I'm gonna finish it maybe by knitting in the mitten or maybe by that weekend I'll have a nice shawl to to wear that's the knitting in the mitten is the first weekend in in November. I don't think I'll finish it by then, but maybe I'll take this project with me to Knitting in the Mitten and finish it up while I'm there. So, no progress on this one this week. It just hasn't really been calling to me. Those slippers really were calling to me. That's why I kind of started those. But this will get done at some point. I'm not too worried about it. It's not like it has to get done. And the stripy socks. I know, and last week I told you I was going to show you a picture of this edging. And I forgot to post it in the, the post the picture. But I did take a picture. I will take another picture of this. I didn't take a picture of the inside. Um, but I haven't done anything more on these socks. I've thought about them. And I did look at the book. I didn't bring it over here today, but that up, a cuff above. There are no instructions on the um, jogless joins in that book. But I did find 
a video. I think somebody posted a video on that on the thread, and I did look at some other things. So I might start doing this. One of the videos that I saw, it had where you knit your new color and then you pick up the previous row and the current row and knit them together. That's how you kind of got the jogless join. But then I'm thinking that that's going to cause that if I that 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 row of stitches to be like kind of like a slip stitch kind of thing. And I don't know if that will work for me, but it's worth a uh, it's worth a try. It's better than just having this yarn sit here and do nothing. So I haven't I haven't really done anything with this. I've given it some thought, but haven't done anything yet. I probably will think about doing something with this um, this next week while while at stitches because it'll I think it'll be a a quick an easy thing to pick up and put down. But maybe I'll start another pair of socks. I'm not sure yet. So those are the stripy socks that have no progress. Cody's over here playing with something. And spinning. The yarn hollow fiber. Oops. I just broke my little lead. Didn't get any love this week at all. I didn't even pull it out. The little tiny... 30 seconds that I spun on it during the show last week was about all it got this week. And nothing more. And again, I think I think it was that whole tour de fleece. Is there any other spinning middle spinning along or whatever that is coming up that will get me motivated to spin? Maybe it's just because it spins so hot and sticky and who wants to be messing with wool? Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. So, oops. I just caught my fiber in my zipper. So, no progress on my yarn hollow. I did work a little bit on the Four Rivers yarn and fiber. And what, I, if you remember, what I did with this was I split this into two bits. I had my fiber and I split it down the center. That would be Cody playing in the toy over here if you hear that crinkling. And I had on one ball I had a little bit more than the other so I just pulled off a, a hunk. But I was finding that this was too this was too thick. I wasn't liking spinning that. So what I did was in this particular one I started splitting it in little littler pieces kind of like I've seen pencil roving I haven't actually worked with pencil roving but just a little thin piece like this and so I would just split off a piece and then rip the piece off and then spin from that I don't know how it's gonna turn out when I actually start plying it but we'll see it's an experiment I have yet to be unhappy with how my spinning looks when it's plied, so I can't imagine it not being nice. But I do like this fiber. This is merino. I think it's 100% merino. And other than the heat, I have the... Goodness gracious! We have the... It's this little tube that, that crinkles that they can walk through and play in and Cody was just going through it <laughs> anyway yeah other than the heat and the humidity and everything I have liked use doing this fiber I think I probably did maybe about that much this past week not that much you know I mean I think I ripped it down about about that much and I did that much and then I guess a little bit more because there's a piece here that I've already pulled off so 
not not a, not a whole lot. I'm guessing maybe a gram or two, maybe three. I haven't weighed the ball, so I don't know exactly how much I did. I'm. It's almost like I work on it when I feel like it and don't work on it when I don't. It's kind of nice just, whoops, just to do that. So that's the spinning. I do have a couple of other things that I want to get started. Um, I was looking at, I have this book called, it's like a little, a little miniature book. It's called Sweet, Sweet Pet Comforts. And it's by uh, the Crochet Dude. And I've been wanting to, to do up this little bed. This one right here. And... I think it was last year. No, it was the. It was not this past this year, not this April, but the April before when we were in um, Lexington for um, knit away. I bought some Karen Simply Soft to make this. What I didn't know when I bought it, and I just realized yesterday when I went or maybe it was this morning, when I went to look at the yarn, is that I bought 5 ounce skeins. And this pattern, somewhere, calls for 6 ounce skeins. And I bought 5 5 ounce, I bought 6 5 ounce skeins, and I was supposed to buy 6 6 ounce skeins. So, I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn in the yarn that I purchased. So I need to go and buy some more yarn for this if I want to start it this week. I don't know if I will start it this week. It's just been something that's been on my mind. So we'll see. I might head back over to Joann's to get some yarn for that and maybe start that. I did um, buy some other Karen Simply Soft for my uh, Mother Bear Project Bears that I'm going to start knitting for the podcaster challenge. And I think that's kind of what sparked my my thoughts on that. What I might do with that other yarn that I don't have enough of is make this little thing. This little, they call it a sofa saver. It's just a little strip of fabric or strip of knitting. And I figure... My, the way that my cats love my knitting, they're always wanting to knead in it and everything. I figure I'll make them their own little afghan and then they can knead in it all they want. And when it's shredded to bits, I can toss it out and make another one. <laughs> and then I don't have to worry because this, like this afghan and any other knitting, I always make sure that it's up and away. So I don't. I don't typically leave this open and exposed to the cats unless I'm in the area. Cody, who is a licker, he licks the yarn. And I don't know, there is there is a space on this afghan that he's actually licked and he's felted the edge because he licks it. I don't know why, he just does. He's crazy. So... Needless to say, I think that they'll like having their own little afghan that they can rip up and shred to bits if they so choose. And then having this other little bed, I think they'll like. They did have, I did make them one other felted bed before that as soon as I finished felting it, they all had to have their turn. And maybe at the end of the podcast today, I'll do a montage of pictures of everybody in the bed. Some of them aren't as clear because I didn't have a really great camera back then, but um, I'll still put them in there. You'll, it, it's funny to see how they all had to be in the bed. So that's one thing that's on my to-do list in the next week or so, maybe to get started. I'm not sure. I think my main thing, I might start a pair of socks so I have something quick and easy to take to uh, Stitches Midwest next week, but... The Bacardi is still, I have quite a number of inches before I have to be uh, casting off for the armholes, so that might be an option as well. Speaking of Stitches Midwest, it's next weekend. I am so 
excited about going. I've never been to a yarn convention like this. I mean, I've been to scrapbooking conventions, stamping conventions. I've been to, like, when I was teaching scrapbooking and stamping with Close to My Heart, I've been to the company conventions where you go and you learn things. And I've never been to anything like this for yarn. I have been to Maryland Cheap and Wool, but I was only there for like an hour. My sister, she screwed up our whole plan for going there one day, and we kind of felt like we were rushed. So I've only really been to that um, yarn fiber event, other than my retreats, but that's just not the same. So I'm getting very excited about going and I think I'm going to be on, um, I, I mean I have a budget to spend but I almost get to the point where I don't, I don't want to spend the money. You know, it's like I know I have my budget and I know I won't go over my budget but then I think do I really need that? And then I, th I think, oh, well, I'm just going to wait for something better or wait, you know, is this really what I want? You know, so a lot of times what will happen is that I'll see something that I want and I don't buy it because I think, Cody, stop chewing on that. I guess I should have given him a snack before I started recording because everybody but Crystal is down here. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, I I don't know if I'll what I'll buy, if I'll buy anything. You know, I don't typically just buy yarn to buy it. I usually except for sock yarn, I always have a specific project in mind. Well, I guess I can't say that. There has been times that I've bought yarn because it's been a really great deal that I've bought enough yarn for a sweater without knowing what sweater I'm going to make with it. But if I have bought yarn for a sweater that wasn't on sale or a really awesome deal, then I have known ahead of time what sweater I plan to make with that yarn. And I would probably say I have at least five sweaters five sweaters worth of yarn to knit. And I probably don't need to be buying any more yarn, but there are a few yarns that if I go there um, and I see them and they have enough for a sweater that I might buy, I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm excited about seeing new stuff and, you know, being able to touch it and feel it versus Mickey versus just ordering stuff on the internet and not not knowing what it is ahead of time. But on Saturday, Mommy Needs Yarn has organized a podcaster meetup. And we are going to be meeting from 1 to 3 in the concessions area. And Mommy Needs Yarn, Erin, she has made this whole um, little signage type graphic that she's posted on the Ravelry and I also noticed I downloaded the the Stitches Midwest book that they released this week and there's a little like advertisement about the podcaster meetup so I hope everybody stops by to uh, to to meet us and I I'm really interested in meeting a lot of you guys that watch the show so yeah, stop by 1 to 3 on Saturday at the concessions area. A bunch of us will be there to, um, a bunch of podcasters will be there to meet you. Uh, let's see what else. Knitopia, this week we received donation, a donation from Leisure Arts. And so that's coming right along. We do still have one spot available. Nobody has expressed an interest yet. But if we don't fill the spot, it's not a big deal. Um, 
but we do have one spot available for the both weekends or the full retreat or one weekend or whatever. And the last item, I think, that I have is the Podcaster Challenge. We are supposed to be getting our... Cody. Now he's behind me. I don't know if you can hear. He's scratching at the glass. He's always done this with mirrors and glass. Anything that he can see himself in. I don't know why, why he does it. It's like he's trying to get the cat that's in the mirror. Who knows? What's the problem, sweetie? Come over here. Come sit with me. You want to come sit up here? You're such a cutie. So anyway, the Podcaster Challenge, we get our pattern on Monday. Yes. I'm very excited. Um, not only to see what I'm going to be making, but to see what everybody else is going to be making too. Um, I'm very excited about that. I'm, I'm nervous because... I want to know what yarn I'm going to use. Do I have it in my stash? Am I going to need to make an emergency trip to Joann's? Um, that's why I'm nervous. But I'm excited to see. I'm not really nervous about, you know, the project or the technique or anything like that. But I am nervous about what yarn, you know, because I, like I said, most of the yarn that I have is designated for things. And I don't know, sometimes I just don't want to use something like even sock yarn. I've had a hard time um, making the shawls out of it. I'm thinking, oh, but I really want to make socks out of it. So I don't know. Thanks, Cody. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll get the patterns on Monday. We can't share with you what the pattern is, but I can tell you what like if I need worsted weight or fingering weight or whatever and then we'll, we'll figure out what what yarn we're gonna I'm gonna use also that will be a good time for you to also get your yarn if you want to do the knit along because there is going to be a knit along as well um, I guess there's a prize for the per the podcaster with the most people doing the knit along with them I don't know I think I think that's the case so I'm going to do a knit along. I don't know what the project is. The, Lois has been kind of giving us teasers on the um, podcaster challenge thread. But I'm very excited. So look for a quick episode on Monday. I'm thinking Monday after work before I start my workout, I'll do a quick episode about what yarn I need to use for that project or what yarn that you'll need to use if you so choose to do the knit along with me. But the knit along that I really want you to do more so than the knit along for my project is the mother bear project. And this is also related to the podcaster challenge. This is the charity element of the podcaster challenge and we are going to knit bears and again there is a prize I believe it's a pair of signature needles for the podcaster who gets the most bears knit for their podcast and I have almost all the signature needles so if my podcast if knitting blooms wins the prize that prize is going to be in turn turned over to a lucky winner of somebody who has helped knit bears for the podcast. So, if you would like to win a pair of signature needles, help me make bears. Aaron is mounting an army to knit bears, and we need to make sure that she doesn't win that prize. She can win some other prizes. We'll let her win. Well, she's probably going to win the Smack Talking Award because she's been smack talking everybody but anyway 
the mother bear I bought my yarn I bought Karen simply soft the the pattern does say at least I don't know if it says it in this pattern um, it doesn't it doesn't specify in the pattern that they send you but somebody had mentioned and I didn't bring the book over here somebody had mentioned that the mother bear bear is also in the knitting piece knitting knitting for peace book and in that book it says this this pattern says worsted weight yarn in three colors in the book it specifically says worsted weight washable wool meaning acrylic or washable wool or something that can be washed because I thought I have loads of leftover yarn from all the slippers that I've made and I thought well I could just use that yarn no they don't want a feltable wool they want something that they can that can be thrown in the washer and washed I guess because they're they're saying a, a washable yarn and then the polyfill Mickey please don't move that and then a polyfill that is also washable so I did I went and bought Karen simply soft because I think it's a soft yarn I mean I could have I could have bought red heart um, super saver or some of the other things but when I think about like a bear or an or something that I'm gonna want to that some, that some child is gonna want to snuggle up against I don't want I mean red heart isn't all that cozy to be snuggling with but I mean it's it's probably all right and maybe what if I did use red heart what I would probably do is I would probably make the bear and then give it a little soak a wash it before I put the bear together maybe that would help soften up the yarn a bit but the Karen simply soft is a nice smooth yarn that is cuddle worthy so you may have seen that I also put in a thread on Ravelry to give away the pattern for this um, knit along to make the bearers to beat Aaron on this on this particular part of the podcaster challenge <laughs> and I ordered three extra patterns I have one crochet and they what's nice is they do they make them a different color this is the crochet one crochet and two knitting that I can give away there were seven people that posted to the thread wanting to win the, the pattern and what I decided was that I'm just going to give them all a pattern. So all seven people who posted to that thread, I'm going to send you a pattern. So please contact me or I'm going to actually send you guys an email a little later or a PM on Ravelry to get your addresses. Because I don't want to wait too long because you need to have this right away so that you can start making bears as of September 2nd because as of September 2nd we're like go 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 make some bears and uh, so I want to get this to you as soon as possible you can choose to have the knit version or the crochet version just let me know when I when you send me your address and I will send each of you a pattern I have the book the knitting for peace book that has the um, the knit pattern in it but I'm going to keep the pattern that Lois sent me that I had received free because I like the diagram that's on this sheet the in the book there's no diagram and there's no little they have um, I'll just quickly flash this up to you they have a little thing here with how to do some faces so I'm going to keep my pattern for the knitting and I also ordered me a crochet pattern because I thought if I get bored making the knit pattern I want to try the crochet. So I got a few different 
colors of yarn to, to do some variations and I will probably be back at Joann's buying more Karen Simply Soft. I did buy my yarn from Michaels and then I went over to Joann's. We have a Michaels and a Joann's pretty much in the same shopping center and so you can hit them both at the same time which is kind of nice. But I found out that Joann's price on the Karen Simply Soft is like 50 cents less per skein than Michael's. So I think I bought like six skeins and I could have saved, you know, three bucks or something like that if I bought them all at Joann's, but whatever. So I'm going to give away seven patterns of this. And I think that's it. Yeah, I, I did mention that Monday I would have a quick podcast update to share the um, the yarn and what have you for the project for the podcaster challenge. And that's it. And we are at about 45 minutes and that will give me just enough time to download this to the computer and then get a virtual knit night started in a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me on Ravelry, on Plurk, on Google Plus. Oh, that's that's the other thing. The Google Plus, if you're not a member of Google Plus, let me know because in order to join the virtual knit nights, you have to be a member of Google Plus. And I think you have to be in my circle. I don't know for sure. But I will be I will be doing the virtual knit nights on Google Plus from now on. So um, you can contact me there. Where else? Plurk, I said. Ravelry. Anyway, I'm off to do some knitting this afternoon, this evening, and relax. So I hope you enjoy your evening or your morning whenever you're watching this. And I will talk to you next week from Stitches. Bye for now.